G'day everyone, welcome to the video and the demo. I hope it's not going to be super long, but I have a feeling it might be. Um, I've got two of the Traveler's Notebook inserts here that I have made. Now, I've got two because there are two different versions. There's a grayscale one and then there's a black and white one. Let me open up the same page. Uh, and there's a black and white one. So, I'm going to explain why I've got the two and why you might want to choose... Uh, carefully and it basically has a lot to do with the mediums that you're going to use with them um, I, I want to say this one's more of a dry media book and this one's more of a wet media book and not because they're made any differently they're made different as far as the printing goes but the uh, the paper itself is exactly the same paper in both they're bound the same way they're decaled the same way so essentially they are the same book except this one is printed in a light gray scale and I've got a finished example in here of the black and white one, but today I just want to demo some of the stuff you can do with the grayscale as well. And my point for that is, when I was doing the testing, and believe me, there was a ton of testing, so... Um, <laughs> I've been through it all. If you have a question about what you can and can't use, I've probably got an answer for you. But, um, you can pretty much use anything. I found this paper, uh, it's slightly textured, so it's really beautiful for pencils. It's a nice bright white. And uh, the deckled edges, I just think, give it such a nice, natural, organic kind of feeling and a look. Uh, but this print, it's printed in high quality black pigment ink. And if you know uh, your products and your mediums, you know that ink settles in, but sometimes not all the way. Now these have been cured for about a week now, and I'm still testing them, and I found that this ink does react. Now I didn't want to use laser printing for this because laser sometimes provides a resist for your products, and I don't like the fact that I can't manipulate over the top of what I'm working. And sometimes the toner has a tendency to play funny with some of your mediums. So uh, I just wanted to stay away from laser printing for this. Even though I knew it would have been an alternate, like a, a, a very strong case for waterproof printing. Uh, but this is pigment ink. So technically it's like you've kind of drawn it yourself. But for that very reason, uh, it is water reactive. And the black and white journal, because it's printed in such high quality, um, just something a little bit about printing. <laughs> the, the little ink droplets, if it's printed on really high quality, and at a really high resolution, the uh, there's a lot of ink saturated into this part of the page. So you'll find that if you brush over this with water or it gets very saturated and kind of wet, it will bleed not only through the paper, but this ink will start to react and spread out this kind of purple. Now, if that's something you're fine with, then absolutely go ahead and get the uh, black and white journal. I think this is great for pencils. Um, markers are great if they're not alcohol-based markers. Again, you'd want to test everything just like you do with all of your other products. But for this, I've found that the alcohol markers will bleed through the paper. Um, I'm still yet to find a paper that doesn't really bleed through alcohol markers and have ghosting. I don't know if there is one out there that exists, but certainly not at a price point that I could make these journals at. Um, so I did, I found the best alternative for that. But I would say this is more of a dry media book, and I did a lot of collage in mine, and a lot of journaling and writing, and uh, you can still get away with a lot, especially... Now, I did use alcohol markers in mine. I used some Copic markers uh, on, on this spread, and that was because on this page I ended up uh, laying some collage down, and I ended up laying some collage down on this page too. So you weren't going to see the bleed through once it came through the other side. Uh, because I'd collaged over it anyway. So if you want to get creative like that, there are absolutely alternatives to making your artwork with this this insert. But the grayscale one is the test that I finally approved for wet media, and that's just your watercolors and um, you know, kind of your paints or anything that just gets a little bit more saturated. The the watercolor has a bit of a different effect on this paper. Uh, you if you you can get the color pooling and stuff, but what I like to do on this is cover the page with gesso and also, uh, sometimes not gesso, sometimes I'll just use a Dilutions white paint. Sometimes if I know what I want the whole background to be and I want it to be a color, I'll just go straight over it with a Dilutions paint and a, and a cosmetic sponge. I'll demo a couple of those things. And, um, and then I found that because the grayscale doesn't disperse as much ink, you might think that this is a, a lower quality than this, but what you're seeing here is just less of the ink dispersed out onto the page. It technically still is a black ink. It's the, the droplets are so tiny and they're so dispersed that you're not getting this heavy saturation that you are in this book. So when you put your wet media on here, these tiny droplets have cured and they're fine and you can work over them with wet media. So that's why I have the two different versions available. I'm going to demo some of this stuff anyway so you can see it in action. But first let me flip through 
the actual book and I guess the images that are in there. So we've got a finished one here. Now I've just collaged over the cover. There's a lot of collage in here. Just stuff that I like to do. I just, I love the deckled edges. I feel like especially in these, you know, kind of organic uh, leather notebooks, I think a deckled edge just looks stunning. I got some collage on here, put an old tag from a Tag Tuesday, just bits and pieces. I put washi tape, some of my handmade journal tape, down the side of the spine. I thought that was a nice little touch too because sometimes you don't like to see those staples. At the front I've just got a few bits of collage, standard. I even put like a little index here but uh, truth be told I wasn't following it so. <laughs> That's not a surprise to anyone I'm sure. Uh, here we've got the mermaid page. Alright, so uh, I've got text on all of these pages that are just kind of relevant to uh, what I was thinking about when I made it. And I've also used some of my collage elements from, uh, this is from the that art journal placemat thing. This is the mermaid on that. I printed it uh, down on a US letter size and she became a nice size to fit into my journals. So a lot of my stuff on my Etsy store, the digital printing stuff, you can resize and you can print out at, uh, at different sizes to, to get into your books, just so you know. Uh, I've used some gel pen here. Gel pen works great on this paper. This is one of the Sarasa milk colors. So if you got that Japan pack, you have one of these. So I've just got some stuff here, some planning. Uh, let's be honest, I'm not gonna follow that. <laughs> just did it for decoration. Uh, we've got the Alice pages here. There are two Alice pages in this journal. So I don't know how that got past my approval process, but maybe I just loved it that much. Um, I put some a digi stamp in here on this side. Uh, these mushrooms were obviously already here, but I added a little bit of washi tape on here. I added a washi tape hat to Alice. Just uh, coloured in with some pencil. Now, I didn't spend more than like 10 pages, 10 pages, 10 minutes on a page. I, uh, you know, there was a lot of testing involved. So, to be honest, I have coloured in this image about 40 times by now. <laughs> so, by the time I came to do the example, uh, I just did some quick pencil drawings. You can spend as long or as little time as you want. You don't even have to colour these in. You could literally just straight up journal over there. Um, and, and write your write your week down if that's what you use your inserts for. You guys know I don't really plan. This is all fake, so. <laughs> uh, I love this one. These are all of these images were developed for this insert, and uh, since then I've started rebranding some of my stuff with with some of these that I really really love. And this one is one that I really really enjoy. So uh, she's just got her hair flowing up the top. This is a nice place to put a title or some lettering or whatever you want. Uh, crowns are for queens because this is my queen page. Um, I've just done some journaling. I've used some of that onion skin letter paper and, uh, and just some more collage bits and pieces. Some of my old uh, handmade tapes. Some tags from Tag Tuesday are, are in here, like stickers. Uh, sometimes I, I, I themed a page. This was about Halloween and uh, some of my Halloween traditions that I love. An old tag I had lying around. Um, I think the best thing about this is that the prompts are already there for you and that's what I wanted to to have down. I've got so many inserts at the moment and they're all blank which is fine and I love it because I use them as art journals but I know there are a lot of people out there that are getting into it. I know there are a lot of people out there that uh, are like me and enjoy you know kind of having a, a stimulus on the page, kind of having a, a, something to work off of. And, uh, you know, sometimes we don't have the money to buy a billion different stamps or sometimes there aren't stamps for things that you want. So, uh, I just thought incorporating some of my images in this book would just be a great way to kind of tie all of that together. Uh, you can see here I've completely gone over this, but what is interesting uh, about me is that I don't care if you photocopy any of this stuff. Uh, if you want to photocopy these flowers 20 times over and have them all as ephemera for yourself to use at a later date, I totally encourage it. I mean, you bought the thing, go and photocopy it, please. Uh, so, everything that, uh, that I kind of work with can be recycled and I like to do that a lot. Especially because I had some bleed through on this page, I thought, you know what, I'm just going to collage over it. These can peek out the side and uh, I'm just going to photocopy it and make one down here. Also, uh, and this is what I'm saying as well, if you, uh, this is a, a done on a really, really light grayscale setting like the other book. And um, this is the first sample that I found worked with the wet medium. So this is actually watercolor base under here. And then I've used markers. Another bonus if you're photocopying something is that you can use whatever medium you want. You can use alcohol markers to color it in perfectly fine. You can photocopy it onto your favorite cardstock if that's something you're interested in or onto a craft cardstock. Maybe use some pastel pencils to color them in. Uh, I think photocopying is, is kind of underrated I feel like in mixed media and I think you should go and play with that because you can get a ton of different uh, options open for yourself. You can really uh, expand the limits 
of your creativity when you've got, first of all, the room to play and mess up and start again. And also, if you're, uh, if you're just changing it up, change up the materials, change up the source, change up the substrate, you know, blah, blah, blah. I love this page. I love how simple it is. I've been experimenting with really limited color palettes. And by experimenting, I mean accidentally coming across it. But uh, <laughs> just, this is that amazing, you can't really see it because I've collaged over it, but this is that amazing letter pad that I got from Muji with the, uh, the, the wonky lines. I'm just obsessed with it. Um, some stickers. This is really, really simple. I didn't even color these things in. I just grabbed an alcohol marker and because that's, that's a, you know, a collage piece. I could do it with alcohol marker. I wanted to tie this in and I had collage on the back, so it was totally fine. I just simply went over the shadow areas and not even the real shadow areas, just my pretend shadow areas. Uh, I went over the shadow areas and colored it in with Copic marker and I just think it tied it together really, really nicely and I think it's very dynamic. So you can see how something really, really simple just this half face. And I've got this quote, if you're gonna be two-faced, at least make one of them pretty, because I thought it was funny. Got that from Smash, thanks, Maz Monroe. And uh, this this page, is it was just that. But you can see that just with a bit of collage elements, these are just a couple papers and some and some ephemera. Uh, it's just, just transformed into something that, uh, you know, maybe you wouldn't have thought of, or maybe is something, a, a different look for your journal that you're going for. This is kind of inspired by all these, like, beautiful, crisp, clear, clean, fresh images I see on Instagram of people's journals. So I totally wanted to try it out and I love it. Okay, next page. Uh, we've got my Ebony Enchantress. I just love this. Her fro is everything to me. <laughs> I think it's a great place to journal. I think it's a great place to list things. It's a great place to color as well. I simply got an old bag, an old paper bag and, um, and taped it on top. I've got a Tombow tape runner. Um, I've just been taping things on top lately. If they're transparent, then I'll just color in over the top, which is great, because then I could use these um, these Tombow brush markers that I've got, and uh, I could re-illustrate over the top. And then, you know, on, I pulled out exactly what her face looked like underneath, but if you only wanted to pull out her eyes and give her different lips, if you wanted to pull out something else, if you wanted to, uh, you know, change the, the line weight or something, I don't know, whatever you'd want to do. Um, I found that overlaying transparencies is really forgiving and you can, um, you can get a really different effect from that. Also, this, like, having a toned paper bag, I mean, it just helped out with ha not having to color a really large space. <laughs> so, um, this is testing some Tombow brush markers. Uh, on the back you can see it didn't bleed through at all, so I'm pretty sure that means that they're not alcohol-based markers because the alcohol-based markers are the ones that I've been struggling with. The other ones that are great are these um, Crayola Fine Tip Markers. The I seriously think they're branded Adult Fine Tip Markers or something. Um, but I just got the 40-pack, because a lovely lady on my, um, my Facebook group found them on Amazon and put the link up there. So um, I've, I bought the entire set, because I only had like 11 or 12-pack. And uh, I'm just obsessed with them. They are great. I'm going to go on a bit of a rant here. These are fantastic for mixed media. When you're looking for a, a fine tip marker, these are so juicy and wet and like full of pigment and color um, that I don't know how long they're going to last because they're Crayola. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know if they're light fast for a hundred years. Probs not, but I think that they're just fantastic for when you're working on top of gesso, when you're working on top of pencils and layering stuff. Um, they're also super super affordable. I feel affordable, affordable. I feel like they were actually maybe 12 bucks, 14 bucks for the 40 pack. I don't know. If you're interested, comment below and I'll, I'll get you the link. But yeah, so some more, just some uh, ephemera, just coloring in bits and pieces, sticking in note paper. I love this one. I put a little Bianca head on top of her. I actually used, um, I got this really lovely Happy Mail package with some vintage ephemera, some like full on vintage stuff. Uh, this is from 1948, this little piece of paper. It was on a letter pad. I think it was on this actually, like a letter, a note. And um, just these like onion skin with this old typewriting on it and it's just gorgeous. So I actually just made a dress. Anything that is transparent, it's got the bonus uh, feature of being able to see through obviously. So if you've got something like this and you want to clothe her, grab some onion skin or grab some paper that's semi-transparent and you'll be able to like literally trace over what you want to put on her. So I gave her a gown of that. Just did some um, journaling on top of this because I wanted like a little, little movement thing, some rub-ons, uh, used my little um, I call it an anywhere staple thing. That's a staple board. The We Are Memories Keepers staple board. Cats are going nuts. 
Um, and uh, I just put an old map behind here, put some handmade journal tape in the binding. I mean, this might look a little busy for some people, but for me, this is uh, this is really approaching my aesthetic. So I, I love when it's too busy. Another one that I love is, is again, a limited color palette. So go figure. Um, but these I've just been putting little uh, little open flaps just for things. I've let some of this stuff go over the side. I didn't take this string off. I've let some of my um, tags go over the edge. I haven't bothered about sticking things down neatly and properly because they're all going to stay in here anyway. And when the book's closed, it's protected. So um, maybe if it was going to be handed around, I'd be I'd be worried about the glue, but no one really comes to my house and looks at these. So, um, so it's fine for, for flipping through on YouTube. Um, just hiding little images that didn't go with my color scheme, but I wanted to put in there. I mean, he kind of did. The orange and blue and white um, but yeah just using some some more ephemera some more of that brown paper bag because I had it laying around doing journaling this was actually normal journaling I was talking about colors and um, you know color palettes and stuff and this is the final page now this isn't finished but I just wanted to show you this is this is the process that I'll probably leave it at before I start journaling and add, adding other stuff uh, I, th I think a lot of people uh, believe that I plan all of this out and that I just do it. Um, this uh, this page actually started with this brown paper bag, this little image here, and these two flaps. Um, and then from there is when I chose my color palette, chose to journal on it, chose to pull in some of these accents over here. I found that once you started doing the creative part of it, as far as like coloring and um, and you know putting your media on it. I think that's when I start to realize like, oh, well, you know, there's a lot of blue over here. I need to tie some blue in over here. And there's some text down here. So I need to put some text over here. That's when I start to fill the negative space. So for me here, this is um, obviously this page is, is pretty blank, except for the word Finn. Um, so that's when I, I start to freak out and I see all this negative space. So I put stuff down first. I've got a grid page here. I've got this old tag that I love, some journal tape strips of um, Bianca and Oliver. So I, yeah, I just, I start there and that's when I'll start deciding like how to pull all that page together. So um, just so you know that I don't do it all at once and uh, there's some more of that journal tape. So that's the black and white one. I hope you enjoyed that and uh, I hope I made it clear that, you know, you can get a lot out of that black and white journal. It's obviously very graphic, so I like it for that reason. But if you're, if you're just a wet media kind of person, if you just cannot bear to, to not put watercolor or, you know, ink down on the page, I, I want to show you the grayscale version just so that you can, um, you can know your options. All right, so I've got the grayscale Traveler's Notebook insert here with all the illustrations. So like I said before, this one holds up well to wet media because there's not a lot of ink down on uh, these images. So they're not really gonna react when you use your, your stuff with them. I've got a few different things to try out today. I've got gesso, I've got Dilutions paints, gesso, and this side I'm gonna do, no, you know what? I'm just gonna do a page for each. Uh, first of all, I'm gonna do gesso. And uh, with the gesso, now you can put um, tape down your binding if you want, um, but with the gesso, I just put a liberal amount on just because I want to cover the whole thing. You can use a scraper, you can use a brush, but what I like to use are these um, cosmetic sponges, and I just rip them off here because they're inexpensive. They're kind of like those um, those blending tools, the, the mini blending tools. And uh, I just like to wipe it over. So you see none of that ink has reacted. If you did this over the black and white journal, you would start to pull some of that ink away and it would start to look a little bit gray and purple and... Uh, if that's the look you're going for, please, please don't let me turn you off doing that. Uh, but I like to cover the whole entire page, that way we're going to create a barrier uh, between the substrate and the media that we put on it, so it's going it's, to, it's, it's like a protective barrier. So you can use your alcohol markers, you can use your watercolour, you can use pretty much whatever you want at this point. And the, the great thing about Gesso is that it is transparent, so you're not going to, um, you're not going to eliminate your image, you'll still be able to see it, you'll be able to work on top of it and work with it. So, um, I'm just liberally distributing the Gesso. Right, now that I've made a mess, I just want to note as well, if you feel like you're struggling with bleeding, if you feel like your ink's reacting, uh, just hit it with a heat tool and you know, really heat up that page and, and cure it. Uh, some of these were printed later than others, so some of them are a touch more reactive than others, but this won't smear. So you can see, like, if, if you can really see um, wherever the ink is, there's a slightly purple cast to it, but it's ever so slight, and you probably wouldn't even notice it, but I notice it because I've been looking at these things for weeks. 
So um, I'm just gonna dry this. So that's pretty dry. Now I want to um, I want to go over this with watercolor and some fun things. So I've got the uh, the new Daniel Smith watercolors here, and I've also got my Jane Davenport mermaid markers. I'm just gonna do like a modeled effect on here, and I'm gonna use a mixture of both. Um, and I'm I'm really not gonna be precious about it. Uh, I'm gonna take a a leaf out of Ali Brown's book and um, just plop the watercolors on. Because um, I just love that effect and I think it looks so pretty and Ali does it so well and she makes me want to do everything that she does, so I'm going for it. Now, you'll notice that with uh, Gesso, your watercolors will react differently. Uh, they'll look very streaky, the color pooling will be different. So uh, just keep that in mind. I think a lot of you have played enough with your mediums to know what's going to happen, kind of, when, when you put different mediums down and you let those react with each other. But um, yeah, just to be mindful, this is just like anything else you would use. If you're going to use Gesso, just because you're using it in this insert doesn't mean it's going to react any differently. Um, so get a feel for your paper, um, have a look at some of the techniques that I'm doing and see if that's a look that you're going for. If it's not, then skip it, uh, go for something else. If you think, well, that doesn't look bold enough for me and I, w I want something a little bit more dramatic, then uh, grab a mermaid marker because those are full of drama. With Gesso, you've got more play time as well. So um, it's, it's great for... Uh, if you're if you don't feel like committing to something straight away, <laughs> you can um, you can play with that medium once it's down. This is kind of like a little a little barrier. I'm gonna spray it just to show you how wet I can get this. Now this paper will warp a little bit, so uh, keep that in mind too. If you're not really into warping or anything, I don't mind it. I'm just gonna close that. I feel like I'm being Diane Reevely here and just like not caring about the ink and getting, making a mess everywhere. <laughs> but it's fun that way, no? This one I wanted to be like mixed media journal, so... I'm going to uh, give that a bit of a dry and see what happens. Right, for the most part that is dry. Now I love the look of this. Uh, you can see where I've not done a great job of applying that gesso. So you can do a better job than I did. I'm not going to worry about it because this whole thing, I don't care if it gets a little messy. You can see I could have put the tape down the middle and avoided that situation, but you know what? I'm just going to let that play into the next page. Uh, I'm going to let it soak through there too. Um, but yeah, so if you do want to put that, that journal tape down the middle, uh, go for that if you don't want to you don't want this to affect your other pages, but I was very, very heavy handed with the water on this. So you could be a lot more controlled than I was, but I was, uh, I was really feeling myself. So I'm going to go on with some paint markers. I haven't used this one in a while, so who knows how it's going to work. I still want it to be quite loose, so I'm not worrying about, um, actually coloring things in. I'm gonna, you'll see at the end, I'm gonna go over these lines that I can still see under here and that's what's gonna tie it together for me. So, really, really not precious. I swear this gesso didn't work, let's just call that accidental texture. Alright, so, uh, I'm pretty good with that. I mean, I know it's a really quick demo and you're probably like, James, that looks awful, but trust me, I might just pull it together. You never know. Right, I've got my brush pen here. I just uploaded a, a tag Tuesday where I talk about line weight, and you can see that all the illustrations in this book, bar these ones, well, I guess these ones too. Actually, yeah, these ones. All the illustrations in this book have a varied line weight. So uh, that's kind of what I'm talking about when, when I was discussing that tag Tuesday. You can see I still started with the eyes because I thought I might ruin it. But unfortunately, I can't grab another one if I ruin it, so I'm just gonna have to go with it. She'll have some very dramatic um, black swan eye makeup. <laughs> Do you guys remember that movie? It was a weird movie. I thought I had to like it because I'm a dancer, but truth be told, wasn't my fave. All right, so you can be lighter handed with the media you cover. Obviously I drew these, so I'm not gonna have much of a hard time drawing them back in again, but if you really need to see those lines, just make sure you're mindful about how much media you're actually putting over them. Because there is, you know, there's a great transparency to watercolor, but for some things you use, and even some watercolors, there actually isn't. There's a, there, there can be a little bit more opaque than you would expect. So you'll, uh, you'll start to lose some of that if you, if you add way too much on. And especially once you've already got the gesso on there, um, you can start to lose some of that detail. But like I said, I drew these already, so I already know what they look like, and I've, I've done a billion examples at this point, so not worried myself.
Now this grayscale one was made for you to play on top of. It's kind of like in that video I showed with the Jane Davenport stamps where if you stamp something with a lighter color, you can use it as a base, a jumping off point to create something of your own. Um, and by all means, trace over the lines and just do what's already down there. That's why I put it there for you. But if you do want to change something up, then this is why I like the grayscale one because it's so much easier to uh, layer on top of and an altar. It's uh, it's really meant for you to play with and to to get uh, something that is is unique to you and something that you really like the look of. Because not everyone's gonna like the same thing. So that's why I like to have that option. Now I've got a little quote down here and I do want to bring that back out because I put it there, so <laughs> I like it. But I could just go straight over it, but I actually just like the quote and I'm just going to draw it again. And this is what I mean by uh, if you want, you can alter it. And it's much easier to alter in the grayscale. If someone does go looking for it under there, you can completely cover it. I don't bother with that because I feel like if someone's really looking that closely, then they want to find a problem with it. But uh, you can totally cover it if you want. But I don't think people really get that close. And if they're really getting that close and critiquing your work, do you really want them looking at your work? <laughs> maybe, maybe you welcome that kind of criticism. I don't know, you'll have to ask Steve how I feel about criticism. For the most part, I'm open to it, if I ask for it. <laughs> Oh, I'm losing my mind today. I'm going to use some of this pencil as well just to show that you can mix your media up here. And just because I said this was for wet media doesn't mean you can't use dry media on it. Um, this is a Mitsubishi colored pencil and the lead on this is fantastic. It's very, um, it's very reminiscent for me of the uh, Faber-Castell Polychromos, which are my favorite pencil. They're an oil-based pencil, I believe, not a wax-based, so you don't get that wax bloom, and they're very, very, very layerable. Very, very smooth, very, very easy to blend, and just butter. They're just buttery pigments, I just love it. All right, so these are these uh, Crayola markers that I was talking about. Oh, this one's dirty, what was I using that for? Oh no, it's catching the black. <laughs> Psych, my fault. It's all right, it looks like purple. And uh, I'm gonna go over with a white, just to bring out some of the highlights that I want. Again, I'm really, really not precious with this part. I even like to put dots on there as if it were glitter. Oh no. <laughs> she just became a white walker from Game of Thrones. Has anyone been watching that? I just got into it, Steve made me. Turns out I really enjoyed it. Well, I think I might have screwed up her eyes, and I think this was probably a little dirty with black. So, let's leave that for now. Uh, so you can see that was done really, really quickly, and there's a whole bunch of wet media on there. Now here's the point. If you don't cover this with gesso, you're going to risk something like this bleeding through. Now this was just for me being messy, but uh, if you don't cover this with gesso, or you don't cover it with like a white dilutions paint, or just a regular, I mean you can do a regular colour, you know, translucent matte paint, uh, you're going to risk stuff bleeding through. And uh, that's, it's fine because you know that, I know that you're all capable of like working over this, but you some, like, what if you didn't want pink on that page? Do you know what I mean? So, let's grab some journal tape and do another example. Oh, I guess let's just put a quote in here. Let's just do a really big one that says crowns are for queens. See, I've got the gesso on there and it's not even coming through. I mean, I just put that there. But, uh, if you did that with the with an ungessoed page or without anything, you know, a barrier between that, that, especially that colour, would just seep in. So let me dry that real quick. Alright, truth time, I had the hair <laughs> dryer on way too quick and it blew this away. Also, the feathering on these mermaid markers when they're really, really wet on this gesso is not amazing for me. So, I'm gonna close this page and pretend it never happened. I wanna work on this page now. So, let me just grab some of that journal tape I was talking about. Here we've got the Jane Davenport journal tape, and uh, it's great for using in your binding because it's white and it's paper and it's got a good adhesive backing, so it'll just protect a little, um, just like a little barrier for your spine. I probably used way too much just now. And it's probably a good idea to do this before you get your ink on the page, but <laughs> when have I ever done something right? 
could use your white dilutions paint, like I said, it'll just act like gesso, except your media will react differently on it. I find that the this kind of reacts more true to color if you're using watercolor and if you're using um, other mediums. This is kind of like a, a really nice starting natural base. The gesso, your stuff will react like it does with gesso, so it'll always kind of stay on top of and uh, like you know, separated, stuff like that. I'm actually going to mix these two together on the page. Dilutions paints are translucent, transparent. So I find that they're really, really great for, I'm gonna get a new sponge because that one's got gesso on it. I find that they're really, really great for, for what I'm about to do because you can still see through them once you're finished. And because they dry matte, you can work on top of them. Do you guys like Dilutions paints? This was on some of the first mixed media supplies that I, I got with Dilutions and Tim Holtz products. Good old Ranger ink, right? I could have done a better job getting a blend out of that. There are still those faces in the background. They haven't disappeared. You can still see them through there. So when you want to bring out those features again, you've kind of just ghosted the image into the background. You've kind of, uh, it's like you're almost looking through a light box. You can still see the detail and pull it out if you want to, but if you don't, you can only pull out, you can pull out just a couple of the heads if you want to. Let me grab a stencil, because I feel like stenciling. Right, now I should probably take these stencils off, but I'm so lazy today. I made such a mess on this desk. I feel like a real mixed media artist today. Dilutions products work with pretty much everything. I think they're fantastic. So, I'm just gonna grab this acid green, um, What's it called? Souffle, Sakura Souffle pen. Now I'm gonna go over these lines a little more carefully than I did the last one. Cause I just wanna show you, you really can pull it out the way that it is. I'm gonna go over these and just bring back out my image. Now these Souffle pens are really, really great, but the white one is so opaque and so amazing. The only issue is they go on kind of wet and clear and it isn't until they dry that they become super opaque. So if you're using the white one, you've just kind of, you've kind of got to look for where the wet line is and just hope that you're doing it in the right place because it's just like, I mean, it's kind of invisible. I'm just going to pull out that face and now I'm going to go in with my pencil and just give her a body because why not? I'm going to go in with a Copic marker as well just because I wanted to show you that even with the Dilutions paints, now you've got a barrier. And di Copic markers are great and for this, I'm keeping in mind all of that stuff that I was talking about in that brush stroke tag Tuesday video. The line weight, obviously this is a much broader line weight, especially with how thin the face looks, but you can still see something very dynamic is happening there. And let's just take this gray and kind of give her a bit of a shadow. Just going down the right hand side, just gonna give her a bit of a shadow there. Let's get a white pen and get real Dina Wakely and put some of this script along the side. Now I've kept everything kind of not subtle, but I haven't introduced black back into the page and there is a good reason for that. And that's because now the black's gonna stand out when we journal with it. So I wrote that for absolutely no reason. I have no idea how it's going to fit into this page. Maybe for something really dramatic, I want to go back in and I just want to introduce the black to her eyes. I mean, I could journal about people looking at me. Then I might put some lines in here and come back and journal on that later. So this doesn't have to be done all at once. I mean, approach it like you would your normal journaling. If you want to go back in and pull out some of those other, you know, these other faces here, maybe with a different pen, you could add watercolor to them if you wanted to. I mean, you could literally just do whatever. This, I wanted you to use this kind of the way that you approach any of your art journals, but just with the base already down. And by base, I mean idea, concept. But this concept is gonna be different to you depending on what you see when you look at the page. Yeah, I just want you to get, uh, get a feel for what you might be able to do with these books. Like I said, uh, photocopy the pages if you're worried about something. If you want to use something really simple as this, you know, this idea here and just try and mimic the face. I mean, you could even put the grid lines over here so that you know where you're going. Or maybe you want to give her a really abstract look. This is a really interesting pencil too. This is the friction pencil. It's just got a rubber bit on the end. You can literally erase the lead 
I think it maybe is like a color race. It does create a bit of a waxy barrier for when you're using other stuff with it, so keep that in mind. So I've shown you pretty much how the wet media works on here. I mean, here's a page that I'm not going to gesso and I'm just gonna do wet media over the top just to show you what that looks like. So that's pretty much dry and I just wanted to show you, you're not going to get the great water pooling and colour pooling separation granulation that you would on a watercolour paper, uh, because again this isn't a watercolour paper. Um, it's, it's great, it's a very very durable sketch paper is kind of what I'm going to call it. Um, but like I said before, you can put the gesso on there and I'm going to show you what happens if you just use the white dilutions paint, uh, that you can, you can use the watercolour on that and you'll get a different effect. So I've just got the white dilutions paint here and I'm just going to go over these two ladies. I'm not going to cover the whole page because I do want to show you what happens when the watercolour is on the dilutions paint and what happens when the watercolour is on the normal paper. I really like sponging on the paint as opposed to swiping. Just in case, just in case there's some ink that wants to play around and wants to be funny with you, uh, I do like to be mindful of that. And that's just because at this point my eye is trained to catch it. <laughs> So this is the dry dilutions paint, and let's just go in with some watercolour on this. I'm gonna get it very wet. You can already see we're getting some of that colour pooling that you're used to, we're getting some of that separation uh, of, of light and dark. That really nice watercolour effect that I, I feel like a lot of us like. Right, now I'm gonna show you what happens when I take this down onto the regular page. I'm probably going to say that Delusions Paint probably works better for what I enjoy, but it's going to be totally up to you. It'll be, it'll seriously be personal preference at this point. So we've done the same thing on the top and bottom here, and you can also, you can already see that there is a difference. There's a difference to the way that this plays up here and the way that this does down here. So this is where I've got the Delusions Paint, and this is where I have nothing. So keep that in mind if you're going to do watercolor and uh, any kind of really, really wet media. I just want you to keep that in mind that it's probably best to have Dilutions paint or gesso, whatever you prefer, or, or just a matte, a matte uh, acrylic white, something that's a little sheer though. That's why I like the, the dilutions paint because you can still see the lines underneath. So when you're ready to come back in and add in your detail, please do not be put off by these images. Like I said, photocopy of them if you're scared. But sometimes the best things are just so unplanned, and this is not one of those times. But for you, it might be. So, there's the difference between the colour. Obviously, it's a little more vibrant just on the paper, but you can build those layers up and you can build that vibrancy up, especially if you want to add in a bit of mermaid marker on top. You know, that's always going to pop. <laughs> so, yeah, let the uh, Dilutions paint do some of the work for you. You can see it doesn't bleed through, so that's fine. Um, yeah. I think I've explained enough. Honestly, this is probably like a nine-hour video by now. I hope you're not put off by the grayscale one. It's made for a purpose. It's made for everyone that wants to use it as a, a jumping off point. It's used for people that, uh, you know, really want to take it there as far as mediums go. It's used for people that uh, don't care about a bit of mess. Or if you, you can be safe with this. You really can be. You can put papers in between. You can make sure that your layers are perfectly gessoed and perfectly covered with a, a medium. But, you know, I, I cannot be bothered. And for me, like... This is, this, this is what I like. I like to see that. I like that the edges all end up becoming this, you know, mismatched rainbow of stuff. I love the deckled edges, but that's just a personal preference. Um, and yeah, photocopy them if you're scared. If you just don't care for the uh, mixed media version of this, just grab the black and white one. Grab your pencils and markers that aren't alcohol based. Um, and, and go nuts on that too. You can obviously use acrylics on the, on the black and white one too, but just like I said, if you get them too wet and if they're too saturated, it will start to pull some of that pigment ink back out. So, I hope I've explained enough. These will be in the Etsy store. Grab your hands on one if you want. I hope you understand the difference between the black and white and the grayscale. If you don't, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below and I'll hopefully get around to answering those as quick as I can. Alrighty, thanks everyone. Bye!